This can start out at 89 and increment by 100. It doesn't matter. But most start at 1 to 0 and increment by 1. Now, if you delete one from the table, let's say we have four records with IDs 1, 2, 3, and 4, and you delete ID number 3, when you add a new record, it's not going to go back and find ones that are missing. It's just going to keep going up. So deleted identities or deleted uh, IDs, they don't get reused. So I say that because it's important not to rely on the number of the key to talk about ordering of how or when records are put in a database. So for instance, if I have these four IDs and I delete record number three, Cody, from the database, and then I add a new one, you know, for, uh, let's say, Alex. You get ID number six, not three. So after creating and deleting over time, my database, right, the first record in this case of the database it's now JSON at two, which means I can't depend on this field to know exactly when records have been added. Its only purpose is to uniquely identify the okay. You should try to use it for anything else. I was wondering about this. That makes sense to everyone? If you need to know the order of when records have been added, best to add a date added field and set it to the current time it was added. Then you can either sort by that field and find out when it's added or something like that. We won't need that for the contacts. Does, is, is there a uh, count um, that you do? Count, uh, yeah. yeah, you can do a selection and get the number of records. A lot of times when you run queries, especially in C-sharp, you'll get a data set back that'll have a count copy, so you're going to only that back. So if I change this property, hopefully SSMS will allow me to save that. You dirty dog. Yes. 
identities are. Yes? So, I like to stop my seats out from zero. Try inserting that again into item. values need to match that same order. So I know my field is name, count, and price, but if I use name, price, and count, I'd have to put the price in the middle for the values. Okay. Snickers with the ID of zero, count with 16, and price a dollar fifty. Okay, so I've inserted a new record into my database. Okay, so if I inserted Snickers again, that's fine. And if I select it again, we can see we have two Snickers, but they have separate IDs. So this is Snickers with ID zero and Snickers with ID one. Or even though they look the same, they're different as far as the table is concerned. Because I did two inserts. I ran the query twice. If I inserted another item, say a uh, coffee cup, and 1,000. Four coffee cups and there's 12 88 keys. That will up in a row. Again, if I run selection, select all from item. You can see here we have our coffee cup, 
might be a two, count of 624, at 1285. Okay? So in this fashion, you can add or insert the new data to our database. Let's say I made a mistake and I didn't want to add Snickers twice. Right? Here's what we can drop. Right? <coughs> so we can delete from items where ID is equal to I want to drop zero stickers or one stickers. Zero. So that's going to find the record that matches this clause, the ID is zero. If I did this, this would have deleted both of them because the where clause would have matched this column for both records. That makes sense to everyone? No. Okay. So if you take a look at the where clause, now I'm deleting from the item table where name is equal to Snickers. There's two of them. There's two of them with that name, so it's going to delete both of them. You don't want that. You know, I might want that, right? Maybe I want to get rid of all the Snickers. But I want to just get rid of one. If I just want to get rid of one, that's why we have the ID. Where at ID one. Or zero, depending on what you want to delete, right? Exactly. And again, if I run that query, it's going to drop all of the records, right? Okay. This would also delete all the ones except the first image, right? Because this is in the ID that's greater than zero. Okay, so you can use these conditional operators too. But you want to be careful on that because, again, what if Snickers zero got deleted or something and started at two? end up deleting all the rest. Could you show us the format for deleting Snickers, whichever one? What do you mean? This is the so, you mean this? So this will find the record in item table where the field is zero. That's going to find this Snickers here with the ID of zero. Oh, so you have to do it like that. You can't put Snickers ID of zero. Yeah. Um, I mean, why would you if that's all you have to do? That's what I'm going to get at, right? So, you could do this, where name is Snickers and ID is zero, uh -huh. but there's no need to. Okay. Just do ID. Does, ID did that check both? Okay. It's so just like happens, any other logical condition, both would have to be true. Okay. What happens if one of them was false? Then it wouldn't delete, because it wouldn't, right? It doesn't throw you an error or anything? It just doesn't run the query. The queries will tell you how many rows were affected. So when I run this, you can see one row affected. Okay. If it didn't work, it would have said zero rows affected. So now, Snickers with ID zero has been deleted. And if I select we can see that old one is gone. Making sense to you guys? Yeah. And Come on. Now that it's gone, you can't get it back? Like I can insert IDs. a new one, but it's going to have an ID of three if I insert Snickers again. That original Snickers is gone forever. Okay, and now your ID of zero is gone too, so yeah. your ID is one. Yeah. Well, my next ID is probably going to be three. Yeah. Right. So I'm saying that's why you don't want to depend on ID. Because let's say you contact that and you want to be slick and store the ID somewhere. Because ID one is always Adam Jones. Adam gets deleted, we add it. Now Adam's ID 137. Right? You need to make sure that you're pulling the data from the database and that you count that you don't count on ID to be anything other than a unique identifier for a record. But it's also useful once you've cleared the database. Like if I needed to find out when I want to delete Adam himself from that delete page, I'll have his ID inside of the app so I can target just his record. 
that makes sense. So you need to know the IDs inside of your application, but don't count on them for anything other than identification of records. Other questions? All right, so let's look at an update. So let's say we want to update our coffee cups. Inflation's happening, and they're no longer going to be 1280, and I'm going to cost $120. All right, so we're going to update in our table items, right? We're going to set, all right, uh, thank you. I'm sorry, I do have a question about the delete. If we're never going to see it again, how are we going to pull up the pop-up um, that shows where the deleted contacts are because they aren't really deleted. Their active field is just set to false. You changed the board. Think of it like... You didn't add that to this one. No. So with the set, you don't need parentheses for the different fields. Um, I'm going to show you guys a reference where you guys can look up what these queries are so you don't have to remember them. I don't do as much SQL as I do C Sharp, so I can't remember a lot of this off the top of my head. Some of it I know, but I just don't have the same command that I have in it. So I have C Sharp. So this update should check the item table, and it'll find every and iron price and set it to 128 where this is true. Since we've limited it the where to ID number two, it's only going to affect coffee cup. But again, without the where, this will set the price of every item to $128. Right? So say you had multiple coffee cups in your table, would you just do where the name equals coffee cup? Um, if you wanted to change all of the coffee cups price to the same value, yes. Um, say you wanted to increase the price of everything in the inventory by 10%, mm -hmm. could you do that? Yes. Um, that's like a level two thing. Okay. Right. <laughs> so, we'll wait on that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say that Snickers and Coffee Cup are actually Brandy and Cody. And I want to say that their birthday is, his birthday just passed five days ago, her birthday is within the next five days. Mm -hmm. This would be where I set this. If you wanted to change the value of their birthday columns, this is where you would use this. Let's say you got their birthdays wrong. They say, oh no, my birthday is actually yesterday. You go back and set a new date for that year. Oh. So update means changes. We're making changes to existing data. Okay. Right? In this instance, we're updating the item table and we're setting the price column to 128 where the ID is equal to two. What's the price What's that? What does R stand for? R? Crud, crew. Oh, read. Read, yeah, okay. Crud, create, read, update, and delete. Reading is selecting. We'll pull the data from the database. I know that you had a, a birthday option. You know, so if their birthdays were coming up, something would pop up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, would that just be in the console and not in the database? Yeah, the, the database has a field for the birthday, but the program needs to determine whether or not Any others? Alright, let's see if we can update our coffee cup. I could have used the name here, right? But again, 
if I had two coffee cups, this would update all of them. And I may not want to do that. In this case, it's much safer to use the ID because it's unique to that coffee cup that I know I'm going to update. That makes sense to everyone? All right. So if I execute this query, not find stored procedure ID. So no parentheses on the ID. Okay. So that affected one row. And if I run a selection, select all from item. You can see coffee cups new inflation adjusted price. That's it. Crud. So today, you guys have learned every skill set that I have to teach all of you. That's it. What about uh, iOS and apps?